Holiday resorts worldwide see thousands of British women letting their hair down, and some are seduced by eager local men. The fact that he was younger, at the back of my mind, it was, <laughs> yeah, I can still pull. It made me feel like, wow, I'm really something. I really felt very, very special. Drawn in by the promise of a new exotic life, some even get married. It was a, a very wonderful day, but the whole time was, it was in the back of my head. Am I doing the right thing? But often these relationships come at a high cost. I was head butting walls, she I was punching walls, she was just couple of... I was hysterical. He put his face in my face and he said to me, you are my wife now. You do as you're told now. And after spending thousands, some will wonder if they've been scammed. I now believe that he'd actually been just stringing me along, getting as much as he could. Somebody that I gave my heart to just basically threw it out to the curb. The spice market in central Istanbul, the perfect place to pick up something Turkish. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye. 54 year old Tracy loves it here. Oh, such a good idea. I love this. <laughs> and she's used to the ways of this part of the world. Are you from Germany or England? England. Manchester. Because I want to get married. <laughs> you want to get married? What, and move to England? Yes. Oh, I'm sure you'll find them on the internet. The men, they see an English face. They try anything. Tracy says she was never in the market for love. I hadn't had a relationship for years after my divorce. I wasn't interested in men. I was quite happy. I didn't want to meet a man. But in 2009, while Tracy was online, a handsome 31-year-old from the southeast area of Turkey said hi. He was friendly, and we just got chatting, and he seemed like a decent guy. He had a decent job. He was a dialysis technician. He was very attentive. He was very flattering. His name was Bulent Doan, and he turned on the charm. Tracy was seduced by the thought of a life full of Eastern promise. Within weeks, he was telling me that he loved me. And to be honest, I had got very strong feelings for him too. It just felt right. And from there, I went out to meet him in Istanbul. For Tracy, this was going to be a holiday to remember. After being single for 10 years, she was about to spend a whole holiday with the man of her dreams. We're both like school kids. Basically, it was like our first day ever, I think. And I was shaking, he was shaking. Tracy felt they clicked instantly. <laughs> he made me feel good, he made me feel alive again, to be honest. And the fact that he was younger, I think, at the back of my mind, it was, <laughs> yeah, I can still pull. Despite the excitement, Tracy found out Bulent's job back home wasn't quite as well paid as she had assumed, and he was skint. He didn't have that much money to spend, and I ended up paying for most things there. And I think it came to the crunch on a night when we'd just had a couple of drinks in the room, and he suddenly said, I need your help. He said, I don't have the money to get back home. So on the final day of the holiday, we ended up going up to the airport and buying him a ticket to get back home. I funded that ticket, and he never offered the money back. Tracy was to return home in love, but out of pocket. Egypt, a country popular with tourists and lovers of ancient art and history. American artist Corin came on holiday here 16 years ago. I've always thought of art as being a talent that was innate and God-given, and I needed to use it and develop it. Whilst touring the country, Corinne also exhibited some of her art, and this attracted the attention of an Egyptian lawyer called Taha Hassan. It made me feel like, wow, I'm really something. I really felt very, very special, and it was just the icing on the cake for me. When the holiday was over, Corinne returned to the US, and the pair stayed in touch. Corinne was married, but years later divorced, and in 2009, Taha made his move. He seemed 
very persistent, wanting me to come to Egypt. He had proposed to me online and said, I'd like for you to marry me when you come to Egypt. And I thought, wow. Corin thought this was perfect timing. She booked a holiday to Egypt and promised to marry her Egyptian lawyer. Within days of her arriving, the wedding went ahead. I think most women would dream to have handsome men from an exotic place, be in love with them. My dreams were coming true that my life was really going to be really fantastic at that point. They call it sarma. And sometimes they put meat in it. Sometimes they just put vegetables like I'm doing, because I've got vegetarian friends. Trace's holiday in Turkey with her new love, Bulent, was a great success, even though she had paid for everything. When she returned home, he asked Tracy to help him pay a phone bill. He claimed he had a bill for a mobile phone he was being taken to court for. I actually said, how much, how much is it for? It was a lot more than I expected. It was 16, 1700 lira. She gave Bulent money to cover the bill, but he didn't provide a receipt. It was just the first big bill Tracy says she was asked to pay. Adding up the hotels, flights and other gifts, Tracy says it was an expensive relationship. Over the three and a half years that I went out to see him, I will have spent in excess of £16,000. And it could have been a, a lot, lot more had it gone on any longer. The sky is cloudy today, so is my mood. In Egypt in 2009, Corinne married her new love, Taher, but she had to go home to the US without him. Taher's packing. We're both trying not to get emotional, but it's hard. It's hard for me to deal with this. I can't tell you how hard it is. Getting a visa for Taher was not easy. It was going to take years. There's my sweet husband, whom I cannot live without. When Corinne returned home to the US, Taha lost his job as a lawyer, so she agreed to wire him money. $250, $250 again in March the following year, another one in April for $250. At the end of April in 2010, $2,200. They go on and on and on. Over the next four years, Taha could not get a visa or a job, so Corinne kept supporting him. I love my wife. And I will miss her so much. But inside of me, I know and I believe we won't be apart so long. Our time will come so soon. Eventually, the visa did arrive, and Taha made the trip to the US. Corin did everything to make him feel at home, including putting his name on her bank account. We made sure Tahir got a social security card. You know, he had the cell phone. I put him on a bank account to make sure he had access to funds. I had invested so much of my life and my effort into accommodating him and making sure he was happy. I didn't want him to be uncomfortable after he arrived. But Corin had no idea what Tahir was about to do. Coming up, Tracy thinks she's been scammed. The money that he took from me was a thousand pound for a mobile phone bill that I now believe didn't exist. And a mum from Yorkshire meets her dream Turkish man. I was so excited, I've never been married before, and I thought, oh, Mr. Wright, you know, I'm happy with him. Holiday love rats promise a new and exotic life, but often these relationships leave the women in tears and seriously out of pocket. Bodrum in Turkey. In 2007, 48-year-old Elaine from Yorkshire was on her honeymoon with her 27-year-old Turkish husband, Adam Gula. I thought, oh, this is my Mr. Right, who I've been waiting for all my life. We went to Turkey for a month. We had two weeks holiday on our road and then two weeks traveling to visit relatives and his family. And I got introduced to everyone, aunties, uncles, granddads, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters. So I had a great time. Apart from I couldn't speak Turkish, I didn't understand what they were all talking about. 
It was a holiday Elaine will never forget. She thought her life had changed forever. It was like a Prince Charming. It was opening doors and doing all the right things what some of us women like, being treated like a lady. Elaine's love affair with Adam began in 2003, soon after he arrived in the UK. I was on a girls' night out in the town in the city centre. We went to our usual nightclub where we go every Wednesday night. I saw him across the dance floor and I thought, oh, he looks a bit all right. I says to one of the girls, so she goes across and she tells him, he comes over and we have a drink together. He said he was looking for an older woman and that was it. That start of my relationship. Adam was a dream come true. I was attracted to him because he was dark, dark hair, dark eyes. He had a nice body. He had an airy chest, which I like that. <laughs> I was happy. He was over the moon. But Adam had a confession to make. He was already married to an English woman. A few years before he met me, Adam met a lady on the holiday resort and they got married in Turkey. And then after a while, he got a visa to come over to the UK. And then they weren't together very long. They split up and he moved town. Just thought, well, they didn't stay together very long. So I, I asked him why they didn't stay together very long. And he said, when he got into the country, as soon as the plane landed, she changed. Elaine was in love. Adam got a divorce, but remained in the UK on his marriage visa. And in 2006, he asked Elaine to marry him. I was so excited, I've never been married before, and I thought, oh, Mr Wright, you know, I'm happy with him. So we'll go ahead and booked it. It was only about three weeks later after we'd spoke about it around the Christmas time. Got married January the 7th. But only a short time into her honeymoon, Elaine started to worry about married life with Adam. When we went to Turkey, he, he said he was taking £10,000 to lend to his brother. And he also took his mum, I think it was 5000 because she wanted a new toilet, because she had the type that went into the floor. And he wanted his mum to have a proper toilet, like an English toilet. He used to go get them contract, contract mobile phones, and I had an old second-hand phone. I just didn't understand it. In an English marriage, what's yours is mine and what's mine's yours, you know, it's ours. But not being ma married to a Turkish man, it's not, his money's his. And he knew that and he told me that. In Warwickshire lives 52-year-old Anne-Marie. Hello, can I get a glass of white wine, please? On a night out in 2005, she met a man from the Gambia called Omar Sonko. He's a very handsome, charismatic guy. Came along and um, started chatting to me, told me, stay with me and you'll never want for anything. I'll look after you, I'll treat you like a queen. He was, you know, he, he, he told me everything I wanted to hear, I suppose. She wasn't so sure, but he was. Anne-Marie was 41 at the time, Omar was 21. There was text after text after text, there was voicemails, there were missed calls from him constantly. He was, he was absolutely adamant that he wanted to, to make a connection with me. So I thought, well, OK, why not, you know? Anne-Marie gave in to Omar's charms, took a holiday from work and their relationship began. He later confessed he needed somewhere to live. He had said to me that he was terrible with money and he was struggling to pay his rent and um, it just was a natural progression, if you like, that, that he would come and move in with me because then, you know, he would contribute to help me and that would also help him. Within months of him moving in, the couple had booked their first holiday to the Gambia. Omar really wanted Anne-Marie to meet his family and they decided to get married. Anne-Marie says Omar's current UK visa had run out, so he needed a new one to stay in the country. He had come to the country on a student visa. He had not been able to finish the course. He needed to send money back home, otherwise people wouldn't be able to eat. And 
I kind of admired his strength for staying and, and doing what he's been doing to keep his family going. Anne-Marie and Omar got married in March 2006. I have the wedding photographs here, all the photographs that we, we took. It was a, a very wonderful day, very humbling and, and very lovely. But I still had doubts on my wedding day. The whole time was, it was in the back of my head, am I doing the right thing? Anne-Marie says it wasn't long before the fairy tale came to an end. The day after we were married, there was an argument. He looked at me, his eyes were like bulging out of his head. He put his face in my face and he said to me, you are my wife now. You do as you're told now. I was really frightened. And then I thought, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? I really think I've made a big mistake. In 2009, Tracy from Manchester had started seeing Bulent Doan, who lived in Turkey and made regular holiday trips to be with him. But she quickly found the relationship was costing her a small fortune. She continued seeing him for more than three years, but then enough was enough. He didn't pay towards anything. The money that he took from me was a thousand pound for a mobile phone bill. And then the final straw was when he asked for a two thousand pound loan. The loan was for a kebab shop. Bulent said he needed to pay for a license to trade. Tracy wired the cash, but she never saw it again. I just felt devastated. I had trusted this guy, I'd given him a chance. And he'd, all the time, I now believe that he'd actually been just stringing me along, getting as much as he could. Three years ago, Tracy filed a case to a Turkish court, demanding Bulent pay her back. But the case was not taken any further because he didn't have any money. He's had long enough to cope with some form of payment plan. And now I think I need to seek some more advice, see if there's anything that I can do to actually make him pay the money back. Anne-Marie from Warwickshire had just got married in the Gambia to a man called Omar. It was a fairy tale wedding, but the very next day, she says, his mood changed. When the couple returned to the UK, she says her life was made intolerable. I think he'd only been back a couple of weeks. He became very, very aggressive and started to become violent. Anne-Marie says rows were common and often about money. He once smashed up the kitchen and she recalls one particularly bad beating. He held me to the floor with his hand in his foot and then he took his belt off and he had this thick studded belt um, and he started to whip me over and over again on the top of my thigh. Um, I was crying and screaming and begging him to stop and he just kept whipping me over and over again. At one point during it, I, I did shout to him, you know, is this how you control your girlfriends? And he shouted, yes, back to me. The violence was not the only thing Anne-Marie says she had to endure. She says Omar often demanded money, forcing her to take out loans and borrow on credit cards. This is all of the short-term doorstep loans that I took out in the course of my relationship with Omar. He would ask me to, if he could borrow money to send back to his family, but I found out later that actually um, uh, he would tell uh, his family back in the Gambia he couldn't send them anything this month because he was giving it all to me, and he would tell me he couldn't give me anything towards the housekeeping because he needed to send it all to the Gambia. Life became awful, to be honest. Um, it was a, the spiralling debts, the constant violence. Um, I never had any money. I was always having to say no to the kids when they wanted something. It was, it was just, it was just horrible. The relationship lasted five years, and then Omar left. Anne Marie took a non-molestation order out against him to stop him returning. She now wonders if she can track him down to help pay off the debts she was left with. I was with this man for a long time and um, I now have 15,000 pounds worth of debts, which 
I just can't pay. What I intend to do is to see if there's some way I can find out where he is and, um, and see if I can get any, any help, any money from him towards these debts, which technically are half of his. Back in Washington, Corinne had spent years sending thousands of dollars to support her jobless Egyptian husband, Taha Hassan, while they waited for his American visa to arrive. He finally got his visa and in 2014 flew to the US and everything seemed perfect. Taher had kissed me and said, I just need you to know you're very, very beautiful. I'm going to love you forever and take care of you. But just 31 days after he arrived, Corin became concerned when she got a bizarre message from Taher. I received a text from him saying he was going to New York to sign the papers. He was not alone. I didn't understood what that mean. I tried phoning him and texting him and got no response. Corin went home and Taha wasn't there. Concerned about what was happening, she contacted her bank, who confirmed suspicious activity on their joint account. He went to the bank where we had a joint account, trying to withdraw as much money as he could. One, two, three, four, five withdrawals in the amount of $200, just a few minutes apart with each withdrawal. $696 for a one-way airline ticket to Cairo. When I'd spoken to the um, bank officers, they had told me he had tried to make many other withdrawals. 24 hours later, Corin says she received a devastating email from Taha. He had returned to Egypt and asked that she never contact him again. I was suicidal. I thought nobody's ever gonna love me ever again. I'm gonna be alone the rest of my life. Somebody that I gave my heart, my life to, just basically threw it out to the curb. Coming up, Elaine's dream marriage is also about to turn into a nightmare. I was head butting walls, she I was punching walls, walls. She was just couple of... I was hysterical. And Tracy battles to get her money back. The anger's back again, I can't wait to see this lawyer. I just hope they can do something about it. Tracy from Manchester ended her relationship with her Turkish ex when she says he failed to pay back a £2,000 business loan. She's come to London to meet Action Fraud, part of the City of London Police, who recently issued warnings over so-called romance scams. I've never seen a penny, and I'd like to know if there's any way that he can be forced to pay any of the money that he's owing. So I just thought, maybe if I speak to Action Fraud, they could give me some idea of what I could do. The deputy head of Action Fraud is keen to meet Tracy as part of their ongoing intelligence gathering. Welcome, Tracy. Um, you've reported this to us as a romance fraud. Uh -huh. So you said right from the outset you thought there was something wrong. Yeah. And yet yeah, you've still gone in. through. So could, could you sort of explain the sort of process, I if you like. I can't explain. I can't explain, but my story is the same as many, many more. On I run a Facebook group and there's so many ladies telling the same story, but they have actually met the guys in person first down at the beach or some seaside place or even in land, and they fall into exactly the same trap. I, I thought I was pretty astute before all this. Yeah. I thought I was quite intelligent, but for some reason, they take over. So it's the emotional attachments yeah. that, that are making you be irrational, do it was things... Irrational. It was irrational. It was irrational. I can, I'll openly say I was stupid, I was irrational, I wasn't thinking. Everybody thinks the guys are different. Tracy's story may be common, but she is determined to pursue Bolent Dohan for the £2,000 she says she lent him. So as far as the money that I'm owed now, is there anything you could suggest that I could do now? You must pursue that through the Turkish authorities. OK, thank you. She's admitted that she thought from the outset that there was something wrong and the alarm bells were ringing, 
but she was in love and the rational aspects that you would do, the due diligence you would usually do, go out of the window. Tracy has decided to go back to Turkey to get legal advice about how to get Bulent to pay up. I still feel very, very motivated now to go out and seek further advice, just to see what I can do, just to prove a point, because people like this should not be allowed to get away with it. In Warwickshire, Anne-Marie eventually split up with her Gambian husband, Omar Sonko, after suffering domestic violence and years of financial turmoil. She's on her way to see her grown-up son, Joe, and daughter, Steph, from a previous marriage. They all lived together when Omar was on the scene. We were just permanently broke, and they would ask for things. Um, you know, they couldn't go on the expensive school trips like their friends. They couldn't have fashionable clothes. You know, they had to make do with whatever I could afford. Hiya. Right. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How's the little beautiful? Anne-Marie's daughter has just had a baby and has a new life. But she clearly remembers the financial chaos in her own childhood. <laughs> A lot of the time, Mum would stress about money. And then, as he was unseen longer, um, Mum just seemed to become worse and worse off, really. Hello, oh, beautiful. We weren't sort of able to have anything new, uh, school uniform and stuff. A lot of stuff would, would come second-hand for us because she just simply couldn't afford it. Come on, I've seen pictures of you with a big smile on your face. Her son, Joe, was only 10 when Omar and his mum married. He remembers everything happening very quickly. Well, I was quite young, so I didn't really know an awful lot about relationships, so... But um, it definitely did feel quite quick. She's gripping hold of my thumb. Mm. He was only casually in my life, and then all of a sudden, going from just seeing him a couple of times a week, it would be now, all of a sudden, he's there and he's staying kind of thing. <laughs> Right, OK. I'm going now, yeah? OK? Yeah, see you soon, yeah? See you later. Anne-Marie has over £14,000 of loans she says she was persuaded to take out by her Gambian husband. She now wants to find him to see if he will help pay off the debts. 56-year-old Elaine married Turkish Adam Gula eight years ago. They lived together for three years, and she says life before the wedding was good. But she says married life didn't turn out quite how she'd hoped. He worked nights at a pizza delivery shop, and she stayed at home. The quality of the married life, I think, was bad. It was like two separate people, not a marriage. He was going out making money. He didn't buy me any clothes. I didn't get flowers. I didn't get birthday cards. I didn't get presents. Nothing. Elaine says they continued married life living as strangers. That was until his British passport arrived in the post. His passport came on the Friday, and on the Sunday, he gave me £60, and he says, there's your £60 bed and breakfast, and he smirked. It wasn't a smile, it was a smirk. And then he said, I can start to be myself now, because for seven years, I haven't been able to be myself. On that Monday morning, Elaine was out and called Adam, but he refused to say where he was. Do you want a cup of tea, Elaine? Yes. One sugar? One sugar, please. She became suspicious and called her neighbour, Sharon. Elaine phoned me up and she went, Sharon, is my car outside the front? And I went, oh, yeah, your car's here. She went, is Adam there? And I was like... I can't see him. I went, oh, hang on a second, he's just coming out now. I said, he's loading his car with bin bags and it looks like he's got clothes, Elaine. So she, she went, he's leaving. So she's going, like, try and stop him. I'm like, how am I going to stop him, Elaine? Let down his tyres. I went, I can't let down his tyres. I'll get done for bloody criminal damage. So and I was sat there, he loaded up his car and he went out and literally, it was a couple of minutes, but it wasn't even five minutes, Elaine comes round. She went into the house and it looked like her house had been robbed. And I was just like... Oh, my God. Adam had done a runner. Three days after receiving his British passport, he was gone. Elaine didn't take it well. I was head-butting walls. She I was punching walls. Walls. She was, she was I was hysterical. I was shock, in shock, total shock. 
But I well. really loved him, you see, 110%. She did. Uh, it was terrible, terrible. Sharon consoled her neighbour, but she wasn't surprised by what had happened. I mean, I've been to Turkey and I've had them come up to me and chat me up with my husband sat next to me. You know, and, and they've offered my husband money as well. Well, I'll, we'll pay for your wife. And I looked at him and I went, don't you dare, I'll kill you. But they, they do offer you money for your wives when you're abroad. I've heard that before. Dale's been offered 100, 100 grand for me. I nearly crapped my pants because he sat and thought about it. Elaine was never to hear from Adam again. He filed for divorce, but he still lives in the UK. I've been left absolutely devastated and ill for the last nearly five years now. Sit miserable, I don't socialise. People's commenting on the way I am and to telling me to cheer up. I'm on antidepressants the last few years. I've doubled them up to try to get out this rut I'm in, but it's not so easy. I just can't seem to move on. Three and a half thousand miles away, Tracy has arrived in Istanbul to seek legal advice to try and get back £2,000 she says she lent her ex, Bulent. She also claims that while she was on her last ever holiday with him, she discovered he was cheating. I was tidying the room up and I decided to put something in his suitcase. There's no clothes in the suitcase, hardly. Um, what there was was winter clothes stuffed in a little bag of mine. I thought, this isn't right. So yeah, I had a look in his case and that was when I found boarding passes from Helsinki to Oslo. I also found a letter from another woman saying, Bulent, you are impossible. I will be at the airport tomorrow, something like you'd better be there. I waited for him to come back to the room. I actually said to him, why didn't you tell me you've got another woman? There is no other woman. You're paranoid. And then I went to show him. The boarding passes, I went to put my hand on the case. He grabbed my arm so hard. I had bruises down my arm for the rest of the holiday. He still denied it. I was just devastated because I didn't believe he'd do that. Yes, he flirts, but I really didn't believe he'd go and do something like that, but he did. It was then that I thought, hang on, have I been scammed? Later, Tracy will meet a Turkish lawyer. She's prepared to go all the way to get back the money she says she's owed. Back in the UK, and Anne-Marie is also on a mission. She wants to find her Gambian husband, who she says encouraged her to take out thousands of pounds of debt. He's disappeared, but she thinks he should help pay off the loans. I found a website who will trace a debtor on your behalf. Um, it uh, look, looks like a good site. It's a, a no fine, no fee. For Anne-Marie, ridding herself of the debts is the start of getting her life back together. Before I met Omar, my credit rating was good. <laughs> my rating now, um, well, credit card, £248, a uh, long-term loan, 5700 another credit card, 2500 um, <laughs> just shy of £14,500. At the rate that I'm paying back at the moment, because of what I need for day-to-day -day living, um, it's going to take 17 years to clear this little lot up. It's ridiculous. For Anne-Marie, crippling debts are not the only indignity she suffered at the hands of Omar. She believes he was also having an affair. I caught sight of an email, which I do now have, um, which is a, a pretty young lady, much younger than me, sending a photograph of herself via her mobile phone to my husband. And then a few months later, I had a subsequent phone call from the same, from the same lady. Anne-Marie and Omar soon separated. He's not allowed to go near the house and she's not seen nor heard from him for years. Unless I can actually find out where he is, then I can't recover any of it. I mean, I can't even divorce him um, unless I know where he is, because I, I can't serve any papers on him. So um, I think this is the way ahead. 
Tracy also has a plan. She's in Istanbul to meet a lawyer to try to get back the money she says she lent her ex, Bulent. But when I asked Bulent why he'd scammed me, the first thing he said, and it stuck in my head, it was easy. I want settlement. I've not been able to say anything face to face to him because he didn't have the guts. And if I hadn't found the other woman's details within his suitcase, I would have still been none the wiser. This is the first time Tracy has seen a translated statement from Bulent, who says he thought the money was a gift, not a loan. According to this, I provided £2,000 sterling for purpose of, purposes of providing support and assistance to him. I gave him the money for assistance only. He didn't deceive me or betray me in any way. The anger's back again. I can't wait to see this lawyer. I just hope they can do something about it. Coming up, Anne-Marie may finally get rid of her huge debts. I think I can put my hands on enough evidence to prove that I was coerced into several of these loans. And Tracy considers criminal action against her ex. This is principle. It's nothing to do with money. It's nothing to do with finances. This is actually principle. In Warwickshire, Anne-Marie finally has some good news. In the last couple of weeks, I have had some success finding my ex-partner, so I can have papers served on him, which I couldn't before, so that's really, really positive. Anne-Marie can now apply for a divorce, but first, she wants to concentrate on ridding herself of the debts she says she was forced to take out by her Gambian husband. Hello, Anne-Marie. Hello, Paul. Paul Fisher has over 30 years' experience in the debt industry and hopes to help. So, Emery, what is it you want to try and to achieve now over the next two or three years? Where I want to go from here is I really want to... I'd like to get rid of these debts. I want to be, you know, in a place where, where I was before all of this, you know, mayhem started. As the loans were taken out in Anne-Marie's name, she is liable but Paul believes, due to her circumstances, the debts could still be written off. Certainly physical and or psychological coercion is duress. If it could be proved that you took out these loans under duress, the financial institutions involved, I think you would, you would find would be very supportive in writing off your debt. That's really, really, really good to know. Anne-Marie faces 17 years of paying back these loans and is therefore keen to get all the help she can. I think I can put my hands on enough evidence to prove that I was coerced into several of these loans and those loans caused me, you know, my, my finances to spiral out of control. I think that's really something that I, I want to look into. All right, our next comic is very funny. Put your hands together for Corinne Kay. Back in Washington, Corinne feels she's ready to move on. Her ex-husband is now back in Egypt, and she's thousands of dollars out of pocket. Has anybody ever embellished on her truth here before? But tonight, she's trying a new way to pay off her debts. Just anything to make yourself look better, you know, for those dating websites, you know, because I'm on one. I'm on one that says, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of them out there. I belong to the, I don't think I have enough time and I'm running out website. Taha has been sent the allegations made in this program, but hasn't responded. Corinne feels hopeful about the future. In the last several years, I've had a lot of difficulties thrown my way. But at my age, at 56, I have a lot of living to do. I'm going to be OK. In Istanbul, Tracy has already filed a case against her ex. But as he said he didn't have any money, her solicitor didn't take it any further. Hello. Hi. Three years on, Tracy feels differently. And local lawyer Sarah thinks she could file a criminal case. Uh, if you could go again to the prosecutor to file uh, a criminal case. Uh, I don't know the situation in Elazığ, but um, mm -hmm. 
go directly to to a police station and give your statement, mm -hmm. uh, explain uh, you have some evidences, including the uh, the receipt of your transfer to his bank account. Yes. Can you, in a Turkish court, use texts, Facebook, email, MSN messages, things like that? Can that be used in court? Yes. I've got even more evidence. In a criminal suit, you have more uh, you have more power. Mm -hmm. It's a better option to file this criminal suit. Okay. And, Filing a new criminal case could mean Tracy gets her money back, but it could also cost thousands in legal fees. It's not a very cheap uh, process for Tracy to file a criminal lawsuit, but it's Tracy's decision to find out if this would be cost effective or not. People are probably saying, oh, why don't you let it go? This is principle. It's nothing to do with money. It's nothing to do with finances. This is actually principle. Anne-Marie also hopes that one day soon she'll become debt-free and move on with her life. I entered into my relationship completely besotted in love, you know, it was a dream. Um, but we live and learn and I would like to think that I'm coming out of the other end of it, you know, much stronger, much stronger. You know, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Onwards and upwards from here on in. Omar admits he was in the UK illegally when they met, but says it was Anne-Marie's idea for them to get married in the Gambia. He denies ever coercing her into taking out loans. Omar admits their relationship was violent, but says he didn't whip her with a studded belt. He says he had to take a harassment order out against her after they split up. Omar also agrees he had a brief relationship with another girl, but says he had already separated from Anne-Marie at that point. He says she was also unfaithful during their marriage. Omar claims to have divorced Anne-Marie in the Gambia in 2012. In Yorkshire, all Elaine can do is reflect on her failed marriage to a Turkish man 20 years younger. She feels cheated. I regret this 110% what's happened to me and it's so easy to fall into it because I'm such a trustworthy, believing person. Um, and he caught me with my guard down at the time. And he come across as such a lovely person and that's what I needed in my life at the time. And obviously it was a big mistake. Adam says that he used to give Elaine between 100 and 250 pounds per week. And the money he gave to his brother was repaying a business loan. He gave his mother 500, not 5,000 pounds. Adam says married life had deteriorated over the years so he decided to leave at a time when Elaine was out of the house. Adam says he didn't regard Elaine's home as a and b and didn't tell her he had been unable to be himself for the previous seven years. Tracy is at the end of her trip in Istanbul. She's determined to continue her legal battle to get back money from her ex. I think my personality has been changed by Bulent. Still, I'm very, very cautious, but I think there's no harm in being cautious. Bulent disputes Tracy's version of events, in particular that he has to pay Tracy back the money she gave him. He also said he tried to break up with Tracy many times, but she wouldn't let him. Bulent says he is now happily married and wishes to be left alone. <laughs> And Tracy is also in another relationship. I've met somebody new. Um, Aziz is totally different to Bulent. He can't do enough for me. He's absolutely besotted with me. He's never asked me for money. He's never asked me for anything. He's actually given me. Um, to say that he doesn't have a lot, he would give me his last penny. He would do anything for me. Hello, hello. Aziz is also Turkish, and talk of marriage is already on the cards. I like Tracy because she is so, for me, so honest, and she is a good woman. Uh, I will marry it, maybe. Tracy, if you want. We will see what, ha what happens. The next step is going out to meet his family in Malatya. 
Um, I'll take it from there. You live once and you take risks and I'm taking another risk on Aziz, but I'm going in with my eyes open this time.